Hi, it's Mrs. Ferris at Wood Library, and we're ready to shine the spotlight on a friend of mine. You might recognize him. It's Pete the Cat. Now, I really like Pete. I like Pete when he's big. I like Pete when he's little. And I even have a Pete, well, to surprise you probably, puppet. And today we're going to have some stories about Pete. We're going to turn ourselves into Pete and we're gonna have some fun games all about Pete the Cat. So let's start with the very first book. It's called Pete the Cat, I Love My White Shoes. The story is by Eric Litwin, AKA Mr. Eric, and the art is by James Dean. And this book is published by Harper. And there's Pete. Pete the cat was walking down the street in his brand new white shoes. Pete loved his white shoes so much, he sang this song. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. Do you think you can sing that with me? I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. Yeah. But, oh no. Pete stepped in a large pile of strawberries. And what color did it turn his shoes? Can you guess? Red. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. He kept walking along singing his song. Everything's cool, he says. Ready to sing again? I love my red shoes. I love my red shoes. I love my red shoes, yeah. Oh no, Pete stepped in a large pile of blueberries. And what color did it turn his shoes? I bet you know, blue. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. He kept walking along, singing his song. Awesome. I love my blue shoes. I love my blue shoes. I love my blue shoes, yeah. Oh no, Pete stepped in a large puddle of mud. And what color did it turn his shoes? Brown. Did Pete cry? Goodness no, he kept walking along singing his song. I love my brown shoes. I love my brown shoes. I love my brown shoes. Yeah. Oh no. Pete stepped in a bucket of water and all the brown and all the blue and all the red were washed away. What color were his shoes again? White but they were wet. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. He kept walking along and singing his song. Rock and roll. I love my wet shoes. I love my wet shoes. I love my wet shoes, yeah. So the moral of Pete's story is, no matter what you step in, keep walking along and singing your song because it's all good. Well, as I said, we're going to turn ourselves into Pete. So I'm going to get my craft set up here and the camera turned down so you can see. So I'll be right back and you can get ready to be Pete. So we're gonna make a Pete headband. In your take and make bag from the library, you should have gotten some things for this craft project. First, you're gonna find a printed pattern. You're going to have one piece of blue cardstock, 
two blue card stock strips, one printed eye pattern, and a scrap of black paper. I'm not sure where to hold that. From home, you're going to need some scissors, a glue stick, tape, and or stapler. You'll probably want a pencil or a marker. The first thing I want you to do is to take your pattern sheet and cut off the cat looking part. So at the bottom. So we're just going to quickly trim that off of there. Set the other parts aside. Now that I have that, you can see that I've actually folded it along that solid line on the bottom. Just fold it back. And then take your piece of blue cardstock and slide it right in like that. And what I like to do to keep it in place is to take a couple pieces of tape and just tape it in place so I know it's not going to slide on me while I'm cutting. So I have one on one side of an ear, one in the middle, and one on the other side of the ear. And then you're going to cut all the way around the outside. So go ahead and do that. Now that I have it all cut out, I'm going to set that aside. Don't throw your blue paper out because you may want to use it for something else. But then take your two yellow eyes and cut them out. And I didn't say it before, but feel free to stop the video while you're doing all of your cutting or pause it. I've got my two eyes cut out. Now set those aside. And with that piece that you had left over on your pattern, we're not going to use the eyes because I printed those out for you, but we are going to use the two down here, the two ovals here, and the triangle or wedge shape that's up here. These will be the inside of Pete's eyes, the outside of Pete's eyes, and his nose. Now, the ones that are the nose and the inner eye, you can cut those right out of your white paper and we'll use them that way. The black ones, we're actually going to cut out of that piece of black scrap that I included in your bag. So go ahead and do that. I'm gonna show you a tip for the two black parts of the eyes. Take your scrap of black and fold it in half. The reason I like to do this is I like my eyes to be the same, exactly the same. So I'm going to take the pattern and I'm only going to use one. But I'm going to take it and tape it right onto my black scrap. that and then I'm going to cut around it but when I'm cutting it I'm actually going to be cutting two because I folded the paper in half so go ahead and do that and then we'll show you how to assemble all of it so now that we have all of our pieces cut out we're going to put it together so take your peat head and let's see move these out of the way and then you're going to want to put your eyes on it like that so grab your glue stick just put some glue around the edges and then stick it right on down like that then put glue on the other one stick it down. Next comes the black inside. I think they called that. I'm not sure if it was the iris. But your little black ovals that you cut out 
put some glue on those. Put those on like that. Starting to look like Pete, don't you think? Then a little dab of glue on the small white ovals. Add those. Like that. And then last, we're going to put on his nose. As I said, it looks like a slice of pizza or a wedge of pie. You want the long edge up at the top and the point edge or the point down below. So it looks like that. Looks like Pete, doesn't it? Then you're going to take your two blue strips and attach them at each side. So I just turned my Pete over and ran some glue along that little notched edge at the, at the side and then put my strip on right there and did the same on the other side. I also put a little bit of tape on the back just to secure it because we are going to be bending it around our heads. And there's our Pete hat headband, if you want to call it, or hat. And you're going to take the ends of that and bend them around and then fit it to your own head. You're going to have a lot of overlap, but that'll just make it a little bit more sturdy. Once you have your band all connected, whether with tape or glue stick or staples, well, you're ready to wear your Pete hat. And if you want, you can wear it while we have another story about Pete. But before we get started with the story, I want you to get out that piece of yellow cardstock that we had in your take and make bag. And we're going to do a little something with it so you can play along while we have the story. I'm going to put my band, headband on Pete. So there's Pete being Pete. So first, take that piece of yellow cardstock and I would like you to fold it in half lengthwise. Like that. Then take a pencil and draw a little line, a diagonal line going from the top over to the side. And then cut. So let me draw that line. And then I'm going to take my scissors and just cut right along that line that I just drew. So I've cut out a little triangle. Then on the open side, that was on the fold side, on the open side, you're going to go down about two inches and draw a line across that's about one inch long. So let me do that. And then I'm going to draw a line all the way down to the bottom, straight down. You can use a ruler if you want or just freehand draw it. And then again, take your scissors and cut right along that line that you just drew. you don't need those scraps. But you've got yourself Pete's shirt. Look in your bag again and you will have seen a little plastic bag that has some other things we're going to need for craft projects. Now, we're not going to need the paintbrush right now, so you can set that aside. And what you're left with is a bag full of buttons. And I'd like you to take out the four buttons that are made out of paper. One, two, three, and four. And then take your shirt, peach shirt, and put your buttons right on there. Don't glue them down. Just lay them on there. 
fold it up so you can see. So it looks like that. Okay, and then set it down in front of you. And as we read along, you can do to your shirt what happens to Pete's shirt. In Pete the Cat and his four groovy buttons. Pete the Cat put on his favorite shirt with four big, colorful, round, groovy buttons. He loved his buttons so much, he sang this song. My buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons, my buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons. <gasps> Pop! One of the buttons popped off and rolled away. Can you pop one of the buttons off of your shirt? Pop! And set it off to the side. How many buttons are left? Can you count? Did you say three? One, two, three. Because four minus one that bounced away equals three. Now, did Pete cry? Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My buttons, my buttons, my three groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my three groovy buttons. <gasps> Pop! Oh no! Another button popped off and rolled away. Can you take another button and roll it away to the side? How many buttons are left? Look down, count them up. Did you say two? Because we had three and one rolled away. So now there are two left. Now did Pete cry? Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My buttons, my buttons, my two groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my two groovy buttons. Can you guess what's gonna happen? Pop! Oh no, another button popped off and rolled away. So take another button, pop it off and roll it away. How many buttons are left? Look at your shirt. Let's see if you're right. One. He had two buttons. One popped off. So that leaves one button left. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My button, my button, my one groovy button, my button, my button, my one groovy button. Oh no. Pop! Oh no, the last button popped off. Can you pop it off? And rolled away. How many buttons are left? Look at your shirt. Zero. Pete had one, but that one popped off and rolled away, so now he has zero or none. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. Now, Pete looked down at his buttonless shirt, and what do you think he saw? Oh, his belly button. Now, there isn't a belly button on your coat, but I bet you have a belly button. Can you touch it? <laughs> so he kept on singing his song. My button, my button, still have my belly button. My button, my button, still have my belly button. It's all good, he said. And I guess it simply goes to show that stuff will come and stuff will go. But do we cry? Goodness, no. We keep on singing. Buttons come, buttons go. One, 
two, three, four. So you can play that uh, game with your buttons anytime, or if you want, you can actually even glue them all down. And one thing that I was going to do was with that scrap of paper from the headband that we made, the Pete headband, I made another Pete face and I cut out some paws and I can stick them right on my shirt and have Pete in my house another way. Well, I have a couple of other button activities for us. One that's really quick. I want you to take the four small buttons that are in your bag and set them aside because what we want for right now is the biggest button in your bag. And there are all different sizes in our bags, but take that and then take that pipe cleaner, the fat one that's black. And what I'd like you to do is thread that pipe cleaner from the back of your button through one of the holes about an inch like that. Actually, you can slide the button down a little bit more, but then fold your pipe cleaner about an inch down and then thread the end of it through another hole on your button so that it looks like that. And then take that end and just twist it around and around and around and around so that it's all tucked in there. And then you can take your finger or a pencil or a pen. I'm going to use a marker that I have. And I'm just going to start at the bottom and I'm going to roll it around and around, not overlapping at all. I'll just go around and around and around until I get up to the top. And then I can just pull it off and you'll see that you've got a coil. And I'm going to tuck the tail in so it will sit up a little bit. So there's my coil. And we're going to make a popping button. In fact, we've already made it. What you're going to want to do then is set it down on the table and press down on it and let it pop up. And you can see how far they might pop. So there's your popping button. And if you get tired of popping it, you can always wear it as a ring. I have one more button craft for you. So take that skinny pipe cleaner that's left and those four buttons that you set off to the side, take your pipe cleaner, stick it through from the back of the button and have it go down and then take the end and put it back through another hole pull it all the way through, and then stretch your sides out so it's flat on your pipe cleaner. Then with the long end, stick it through another hole, another button's hole, move it down a ways, put the end through, get a good tug, and have it set flat so you've got two and do that same thing with the other two buttons put it through move it down on the pipe cleaner stick it through the hole on the opposite side pull the tail all the way through sometimes it might fight you a little bit if it's twisting and then have it be flat. And then one more. I'm gonna move my green one just a little bit because it's a little closer than I want it to be. Okay. 
So there are my four buttons. I'm just gonna make sure that they're all on the same side. And then I'm going to bend that pipe cleaner around. And you may wanna have mom or dad do this for you because what you're making is a button bracelet. And you'll just twist the ends and everybody's wrist will be a little bit different. But, so twist them around. Hard to do it on yourself. And there's my button bracelet. A lot of the newer peat books are based on songs and rhymes that you might be familiar with, and that's probably the case with this one. This is called Pete the Cat, The Peats Go Marching, and it's based on the song that many of you may know as The Ants Go Marching, but this time it's Pete, and not just one. There's a whole line of them. Now, if you'd like, you can march along while I sing this uh, story, or you can March by slapping your thighs to the beat. Here we go. This is written and illustrated by James Dean. The peats go marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. The peats go marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. The peats go marching one by one, the groovy one stops to have some fun. And they all go marching down to town to get out of the rain. Boom, 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 boom. The peats go marching two by two. Hurrah, hurrah. The peats go marching two by two. Hurrah, hurrah. The peats go marching two by two. The groovy one stops to meet the crew. Hey there, guys. And they all go marching down to town to get out of the rain. Boom, 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 boom. The peats go marching three by three, hurrah, hurrah. The peats go marching three by three, hurrah, hurrah. The peats go marching three by three, the groovy one stops for a tambourine. And they all go marching down to the town to get out of the rain. Boom, 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 boom. The peats go marching four by four, hurrah, hurrah. The peats go marching four by four, hurrah, hurrah. The peats go marching four by four, the groovy one stops by at the store. And they all go marching down to town to get out of the rain. Boom, 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 boom. The peats go marching five by five, hurrah, hurrah. The peats go marching five by five, hurrah, hurrah. The peats go marching five by five. The groovy one stops to take a drive. That's his tour bus. And they all go marching down to town to get out of the rain. Boom, 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 boom. The peats go marching six by six. Hurrah, hurrah. The peats go marching six by six. Hurrah, hurrah. The peats go marching six by six. The groovy one stops to pick up sticks. Drumsticks, that is. And they all go marching down to town to get out of the rain. Boom, 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 boom. The peats go marching seven by seven. Hurrah, hurrah. The peats go marching seven by seven. Hurrah, hurrah. The peats go marching seven by seven. The groovy one stops to play rock and roll heaven. And they all go marching down to town to get out of the rain. Boom, 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 boom. The peats go marching eight by eight. Hurrah, hurrah. The peats go marching eight by eight. Hurrah, hurrah. The peats go marching eight by eight. The groovy one stops for his bandmates. Glad you made it, guys. And they all go marching down to the town to get out of the rain. Look, the sign says, Pete the Cat and his band. Concert tonight, 7 p.m. Boom, 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 boom. The peats go marching nine by nine. Hurrah, hurrah. 
the peats go marching nine by nine. Hurrah, hurrah, the peats go marching nine by nine. The groovy one stops to check the time. Do you know what time it is? The big hand is on the 12. The little hand is on the seven. That means it's seven o'clock, show time. And they all go marching down to town to get out of the rain. Boom, 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 boom. The Pete's go marching 10 by 10, hurrah, hurrah. The Pete's go marching 10 by 10, hurrah, hurrah. The Pete's go marching 10 by 10. The groovy one stops to shout, the end. And they all cheer for Pete the cat to rock out in the rain. Yeah. And I don't know if you noticed it. I'm going to go back to this page. Look at those peats. Every one of them has a different color pair of shoes. Imagine that. We have one more peat book coming up and an activity to go with it. But I thought maybe while you're listening to this story, you go back into your take and make bag and you'll find some goodies, a little bit of a snack for you. Pete approved this snack because it's fish and you know cats like fish. And you can enjoy the snack while we have our next story. I think I'll try one. Our last story is from a book, Pete the Cat Treasured. It has six different stories about Pete. And the one I chose is A Pet for Pete. Pete is going to the pet store. Pete wants a bird, a hamster, or a lizard. But then Pete sees a goldfish. That's what I want, he tells his mom. Pete's mom gets fish food. I'm going to call you Goldie, Pete says to his new pet. You are my first pet, Pete tells Goldie on the way home. Pete takes Goldie to his room. He feeds her fish food. Now what? asks Pete. He can't play with Goldie. He can't swim with her. Pete knows what he can do. Pete paints a picture of Goldie. He paints four fins and an orange tail. What a pretty painting, says Pete's mom. You can keep it, says Pete. Cool painting, says Bob. Do you see she put it right up on the wall? Can you make one for me? Sure, says Pete. Pete picks a picture for Bob. Wow, says Bob. It looks just like Goldie. Bob shows Pete's painting to his friend Tom, and now Tom wants a painting too. Pete paints another picture of Goldie to take to school for show and tell. This is Goldie, my pet fish, Pete tells his class. Cute fish, cool colors, nice work, says his teacher. I wish I had a picture of Goldie, says Benny. I'll make you one, says Pete. Everyone in Pete's class wants a painting of Goldie. Pete's grandma wants a painting too. Pete has lots to do. He has to feed Goldie. He has to do homework. Pete paints and paints. He makes paintings for everyone on his list. At last, Pete is done. He worked hard and there's no paint left. Pete's paintings are a big hit. Pete is happy to be done, but Pete is not done. Now everyone in town wants a painting of Goldie. The bus driver, the coach, everyone. Pete gets more paint. I don't know what to do, he says to his mom. I wish I could paint pictures for everyone, but I just don't have time. Pete's mom has an idea. She tells it to Pete. 
Great idea, says Pete. And Pete gets right to it. This time he works outside and he makes a huge painting. Do you see how big it is? There's Pete. And the painting is twice as tall as he is. Honk, honk, beep, beep. Here comes Pete. He has made one painting of Goldie for everyone in town to enjoy. What a great day. And when Pete gets home, he tells the real Goldie all about it. So our last activity is you get to paint a picture of Goldie. Inside your take and make bag was a little container of orange paint. And now you can bring out that foam brush that I had included. I didn't have a little container, so I've put my paint on my little baggie from my take and make bag. And then I'm going to paint Goldie. I went and dampened my paintbrush a little bit just so that it would not be totally dry when I put it in the paint. And I'm just gonna get a little, and then I'm going to paint in from the edge. And the thing I like about using paint like this is you can almost make it look like scales. This is acrylic paint. Outdoor or indoor, dries quick. It does clean up easily. So just brush it on there. It will make your paper a little bit wrinkly, but that's okay. I don't like to put too much paint on my brush. You can always add it, but it's harder to take it away. So I'm just gonna paint inside the lines. You can do yours however you want. Holding the brush and painting is a fine motor skill, so it's a good thing for pre-kindergartners. And also trying to stay inside the lines is a skill. Again, a fine motor skill that takes a little bit of time to do. And then I'm just going to do a few swirls with it because that will look like the fish's scale. Don't want to forget her top fin. I think she could have a little bit more around her eyes. I can get a little closer. Probably easier to do with a smaller brush, but I thought this was a good size for you. Set that aside. I'll take my baggie because I don't want the paint to get all over anywhere else. So I'll open it up and turn it inside out before I toss it in the trash. I'll wash my brush out, but I'll do that after I see. How we, oh, look what I forgot. I forgot her bottom fin. Good thing I've still got some paint on my brush, right?
I didn't notice that until I was ready to show it to you. So there's my picture of Goldie. And I think I'll put some tape on it and tape it up right by my desk downstairs. So if you stop in the library, you can see my picture of Goldie. Thanks for joining me as I was able to shine the spotlight on my very good friend, Pete the Cat. Check out some of our other spotlight videos for other book characters, authors, or illustrators that we find really great. And we'll be back next month with another spotlight program.